So let's dive into that. We're going to swap sports. We're going to talk NBA. Adam Silver had a discussion today. Said that they are on track, but the coronavirus spread may stop the NBA again. Uh, this is Om Young Mizduk. I hope I said that right. ESPN writer. Uh, McKinnon said, I mean, how much of MLB profit driven off ticket sales versus TV income? I know it's not remotely close in the NFL. I honestly don't know. Well, here's the MLB. Uh, they make a lot more on the regional stuff, right? Ticket sales, merch, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, they still, they got some good TV deals. Like, they, they still got money. It's no big deal. Um, so with the NBA, it says, with coronavirus cases on the rise in the United States and some teams recently closing their facilities due to positive cases, NBA Commissioner Adam Silver remains, quote, pretty confident about the NBA's plan to safely resume play, but admits that a spread in the NBA community could bring the league to a halt again. During an appearance on Time 100 Talks, Silver was asked if there is any chance the NBA does not go to Orlando, Florida as planned due to the surge in coronavirus cases, or if it is still full steam ahead to resume play at the end of July. He said, uh, never full steam ahead no matter what, Silver responded to Time. One thing we're learning about this virus is much is unpredictable, and we and our players together with their union look at the data on a daily basis. If there was something to change that was outside of the scope of what we're playing for, certainly we would revisit our plans. Um... This is a, a, another incident that's, you know, what are we going to do here, right? Like, I'm kind of at a loss. I, I didn't really know how I wanted to attack this. I just knew it was a massive issue because we have been talking about how the NBA could be back, you know, as early as the beginning of May had they gone on and done this. And with the surge in cases in the United States right now, while the median age of the people being infected is much, much lower, and the deaths are down tremendously. We got cases that are that are spiking back up, and nobody knows what the long-term effects of this are. Like, how does this affect the lungs? How does it, It's all the stuff that we've already talked about. I think as soon as they isolate in Orlando, it is the best position to be in. Like, it, Maybe I'm crazy. Chris, do you think I'm nuts for this? I, if you're in a bubble, yeah, I don't know how many I times we've been over it, this. Yeah. Like once, And they said this before. We believe people are going to have it. We know people are going to have it. Once we get them in the bubble and they isolate in the bubble, they feel they've got the bubble as clean and as sterilized as it's possibly going to be. And they feel like no more cases will come in and nobody else will get it once they get to the bubble. The problem is, is we got to find a way to get us to the bubble with everything surging right now. This is one of those situations where had they done this a month ago, we don't have the surge. Everybody's in the bubble. Everybody's as sterile as possible. Everything is clean and neat and packaged the way they need it. And we are already doing this, but they've waited so long. I did the same thing when planning my vacation. It's just, I thought the long, the longer I kick this out, the better it's going to be because I didn't think we were going to get a surge or a spike this soon. We all thought October, November, we'd see another wave. But nobody thought immediately it was going to just go right back up. Yeah. No, you're right. Uh, Scott Shearer jumps in on YouTube, said the quicker they isolate those guys in Orlando, the better. Obviously, if you wait until late July, it's only raising the risk of guys getting infected. But here's the deal. They're all going to Orlando within the next week or two. Yeah. Like, that's, that's the deal, is they're getting down there for a training camp, and then they start playing at the end of July. McKinnon jumps in. He said, out of all the professional sports, I feel the NBA is by far the easiest to control in regard to quarantining players because this of team is, size. This is a volume of players. Yeah, team size and playing location. Yeah, yeah. I mean. It, this is a sheer volume of players. You're just dealing with less people. It's just easier to say, you nine people, that's, that's all you got that's playing, okay? Nobody's running 10, 12-man rosters. They got rosters, but those guys aren't touching them. Touching the court, especially not when the playoffs start, all right? Nobody's got a 12-man rotation. Yeah. You nine people, go sit in that room and, and hang out. That's it. We're going to bring food to you. You watch TV. You do whatever you want in that room. That's the list. That's a really nice room, by the way. We're not sticking you in a hole. It's not a cell. It's a, it's a really nice room. But you get to go over there. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you're the still going to get paid. Three months. Still, yeah. Damien jumps in. He said, why not relocate to Vegas or on an island? Well, I mean, UFC got the island, but at, as far as relocating to Vegas, I mean, you're still going to have the same problems getting them into. 
I, the bubble. People are like, afraid of Orlando being in Florida, and they associate with the problems with the Rona in Florida, and it's going to get to Orlando. If you're in a bubble and nobody is getting in, we're not. We're forgetting the fact that randos off the street aren't coming into your bubble. Okay, nobody's running to the gas station for a pack of cigarettes and some bubble gum. Like that's not happening. Well, I think I think he and and other people that are questioning this is you still have to be able to get into it. Like there's not a there's not an airport to get into Disney World, right? You're not just flying directly into the bubble. You still no, have to go these through. They're flying private. What are you talking about? They're not going through the airport at the. No, no, no. I know they're flying. They're Disney flying World? charter, but you still have to go through several no. locations to be able no, to get to. No, 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 no. These people are going to walk off. They're not going through a jetway. They're not going through a terminal. They're going to walk off. They're going to walk down the stairs of that plane. They're going to hop into a limo or a bus, and it's going to take them to the to the arena. They're going to take them where they're going. These people are not walking through Orlando's airport. No, no, no. I agree. Crazy? Agree. No, I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is you're still going to have to go through, whether it's a driver that's from Florida or whatever, you're going to run into people somewhere along the yeah, way. I, but I assure you that person, the people that are, Adam Silver has talked about this. Everybody from the people who prepare the food, the clean your rooms, that, that, that are going to be around working, they all have to have agreed to live in the bubble as well. Yeah. These are not people that are going home to their families. That driver is going to be the driver that drives the bus from the hotel to the arena where they play because they've got multiple courts across Disney World. They're not all right next to one another. And he's going to he's gonna be responsible. Or she's going to be responsible for taking them. She's going to live in the bubble. I wonder how much those employees at Disney are going to make. I mean, it's got to be a, probably not a great deal. Okay? But, I, but I would bet it's more than they usually get. Well, yes, I'm, I'm sure yeah. they're getting some type of hazmat pay for having to deal with the extra pain in the ass. But if you were a $15 an hour employee, you're probably getting time and a half. So it's it's not as if these people are going to walk away from this thing making a hundred grand. No, 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 okay. of course not. Of course not. Uh, Scott Shearer said, who's keeping an eye on James Harden to make sure he doesn't go to the club? Uh, I think that's his team's responsibility. Yeah, I really do. I, I think once they get to the bubble, it is on the team to control their own individual players. And if well, and, somebody and the league has pushed out of the bubble, yeah. then guess what? You bounced. But you the, out. Yeah, they, they have said that they are. Uh, there are some serious issues, yes. some serious, uh, what's the what's the word I'm looking for? Punishments. Repercussions, punishments, yeah. yeah. Um, McKinnon said, hell, I just quarantined over here for two weeks with about 80 soldiers, and while it was inconvenient, it wasn't the end of the world by any means. Test of no. the day we got there. Test and these the guys are going to be left. quarantining with the best of the best. They're going to yes. have workout equipment. They're going to have the best food in the world brought to them. They're going to have some of the best rooms to stay in. I mean, you know, they're, they're not going to the to the pop resort, all right, at Disney, the, the, the low-budget resort that we're all squeezing our family into so we can afford this trip. I know okay. the, the Grizzlies are going to be in the Grand Floridian. So Yes, and, it's and, and, and I would bet that we got one of the worst draws. Okay, uh, because we're the Grizzlies. No, actually, uh, the Grizzlies were in Tier 2. So, Oh, wow. That yeah. surprises me. I don't know how we got that. So, well, because right now, the Grizzlies are in the playoffs. Like, it, it was based on record. Like, who has the likelier chance of staying Making here longer? Playoffs. That's fine. So, But anyway, there's enough rooms at all of the deluxe resorts and the premium, like, super premium resorts where where they can house all 32 teams and all of these guys and and not run out of great elite level rooms. And these these are the resorts. They've got three of them. They're massive. Yes. And, and I stayed in one. It was yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Really good stuff. Really good stuff. All right. Let's dive off of that. Let's jump into the last topic of the day. And we're getting back to college football. Did it uh, write my time down here? Hang on. I'm gonna go back to that by a minute. We didn't even address the fact that. The reason we're worried about it shutting down again oh, is because yeah. the uh, Nuggets facilities literally are had down. to shut down their operations today because they've had a spike go through their organization. And that's, that's only the Nuggets today, but there are other ones. Others that, that, that are, have we, we think are going to end up doing this as well. The Pelicans yeah. had three more people test positive today that weren't in the original test. 
Um, the Nuggets, like I said, organization completely shut their facilities down to everybody. Yeah. No players, no coaches, no staff, no nobody's getting in there at all. Um, so this is why we are worried about the NBA getting started back. We're so close, and I feel like we're, we're gonna we're, there's something's gonna happen. We're gonna miss out. Uh, Damien jumps in. He said, "What if their driver or the?" Uh, people at the hotel get infected by the virus. They don't show any symptoms. Uh, blah 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 blah. What what a he said. What the hell are you supposed the to do? They're in That's, the bubble. They're in the bubble too. Yeah, we like, just they're going to be checked just like the players yeah. are going to be checked. Constantly. We, we just talked about. They're that. not going home. Yep. No, no. They're they're all in the bubble as well. We got nothing to worry about with that. So the NBA is taking precautions on that. So yeah, this was part of the deal that they made to work with these players and to and to take on this situation. Do you have enough people that can live on on campus? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, we're a little. I would have volunteered terrified. if I was an employee at Disney. I'd have been raising my hand immediately. I'll, I'll gladly leave my family for three months. I love them, love them, but I just spent the last four with them. Okay, I, and and then by the time we get there, it'll be five. I, I will gladly spend three months away. And making, and then I'm betting making that time and a half. When you're done with that three months, I'm gonna bet there's a nice vacation that's at least owed to you. Oh yeah. And and you're making time and a half. And so, you're probably making time and a half. And I'm going to bet it's not an eight hour shift and you go home. I bet you're getting a lot of hours. I bet I bet they're twelve hour shifts. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So you're talking you're talking about a massive, massive increase in these people's pay. I would have I would have absolutely volunteered for this. Yes, yes. I I I think I might agree with you. I think I might agree with you. Uh, McKinnon said, "All right, boys, got to get back at it. Love and miss y'all. Keep killing it. Hey, we love you too, buddy." Keep doing what you're doing. We're uh, we're thinking about you over there. We appreciate your service, of course. Let's dive into the last topic. College.